my name is Nick Foz. Um, I've did, done a lot of media training in the past, and I'm now doing teacher training to be a computer teacher in secondary school. Um, I'll try and draw out some of your stories, some of your experiences of training in the realm of alternative media. But if you've got, did, done something else that's relevant or similar, feel free to pitch that in as well. Um, on, on the sheet it says we're sharing experiences and also resources as well. So it'd be great, like, if you think, people mention a website and you go, oh, that's really good. If, if it's tweeted with the hashtag real media, or if you can even be bothered real media training, should we just, let's just say real media. Okay. Um, then we can go back at the end of the day, we can look at that hashtag, and we can look at all the websites that people shared already. If anyone's up for it, we could take um, notes as well in terms of a uh, electronic note and then we could put that on the blog of the Real Media website as well. So I'm thinking Twitter and a blog post as an outcome for this of all these shared things that we share would be totally fantastic. You up for doing a bit of that? Alright, cool. Alright, yeah. Will you email them to me afterwards? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm I've got reward stickers as well. Um, so, <laughs> it's really difficult for me to transition between the adult training that I've done and then the secondary school training, so that's, that's all good. Uh, so, let's see how to get things started. I'll share one or two stories about me and then just kind of, um, I've got some people that I can draw upon to get the ball rolling as well. But some of the stuff that I've done is, just checking that's working. Oh, it's hard to, yeah, it's working brilliant. And some of the stuff I've done, also, um, is um, video training. So I used to uh, work with a group called Undercurrents that did a VHS magazine. So you can tell how far that goes back. It was taking video reports from all around the UK and Europe, putting them onto one VHS, sending it to the copiers, and then they send that out to people to do film screenings. And uh, that was a really good group for training people how to make short two or three minute um, video reports. To, and they got across news in a really um, emotive way that was really good for getting people going and involved in the campaigns. So that's how I got into it in a way. And that was still involved with people who do that. This interesting web um, collective called Video for Change, and their website is called v4c.org. And that's where I try to um, try to get a bit of work out of them, actually, writing manuals and writing resources. Um, I'm a bit of a technical writer, for, so stuff about software, video editing on free software, and uh, kind of like trying to do it with low-cost equipment. There are going to be some guys here called Hamish and Richard, but I don't think they got a workshop, so I think they kind of didn't come because um, they wanted to be able to showcase what they do, which they do very well. They're called Vision on TV, and um, they did a, um, a manual for this uh, video for change uh, project, <coughs> all, called How to Do Filmmaking on Android Phones. Uh, it must be a 100-page manual, but really user-friendly, breaking up into different bits, and one of their things they do is a fantastic template. You must have come across them before, if you Hamish and Richard Vision on TV. Uh, okay. <laughs> And um, they do, have you come across the templates that they do? They do these um, two page templates uh, in cartoon format saying get an establishing shot of the outside building, then um, focus on one detail and have someone present it, then cut to an interview about the issue, then have someone out, out produce it, and that's it. And they reckon they can teach someone to make a three minute film in about half a day. So vision on TV, they're just boiling it down. Um, so I'll get the ball rolling by throwing it out to Alan, who's gonna share a bit of a story about doing some training for uh, security, which is something that I think is well pitched at radical journalists. Hi, so I'm, I'm Alan. Um, I do uh, been doing some training stuff regarding uh, internet security uh, for for, uh, for people, for everybody really, because um, uh, we're all trying not to get farmed. 
as much. Um, so um, we've been using some software called Tails. Tails is um, uh, it's, it's a really awesome piece of software uh, that you can just boot your computer with. Um, and it uh, configures your computer. It doesn't actually touch any, any of the hardware in the software on your computer. So it all runs from a, a USB stick. And it's configured to use the Tor network. Do people, people know what Tor is? Okay, Tor, yeah, okay. It's good. And, and it's, 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 very, it's very good, it's very secure, it's a very nice way of using Tor. One of the problems of using Tor is it's easy to make mistakes which kind of leak information. It's very easy to get good communication and information security using Tor. Um, and if you, um, if you look at the, the uh, old de-anonymization attacks against Tor users, there's lots of really technical ones you can read about on the internet by like really smart people, the, uh, you know, computer researchers. But actually, people who use Tor just make mistakes, okay? Or they just don't patch their systems and they just make mistakes, okay? So Tails is a really, really nice way of uh, using Tor. So we've been doing outreach around that with people. Um, that's quite, it's quite, it, it's, it's quite technical. We have a little sh demo show we do. We can talk in more detail around it. And it takes about 30 minutes, that kind of time around using uh, Tor and Tails. So that's quite nice. Um, what were some of the things that worked well about that workshop, or some of the things that you do differently? Um, well, when we do the workshop, um, I, I run, I run Tails on the computer, and we give people away. Um, or for donation, a uh, USB stick that comes pre-installed with it, and that's that's about about two pound fifty to take donations and just give them away for it. Um, uh, what works well? I mean, it, it just works. The software is really good. It's actually um, so it's nice to, be able to demonstrate it and show it working. Okay, and it works in many many different scenarios. Okay, so like Wi-Fi networks, where you've got to log in first and all this kind of thing. It works really well. Obviously. What doesn't work well is that. Um, not people come to them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and we don't really know if people use it afterwards, the software afterwards. And, yeah. uh, but I would encourage people to try to use Tails. And it's getting, it's getting, it's, getting um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a practical product. One of the things I don't really uh, worry about is that, um, that we don't really think big enough sometimes in the projects that we get going. So we have these like media projects and video projects and blogging projects, like say the Network 23 project and the Lots of, lots of alternative media platforms and lots of people talk about security and things like that, but we don't really, sometimes I think we should be trying to find solutions out of that. Yeah, planet's big, we've got big problems. We need to touch lots of people if we're going to um, make changes. So, so one of the reasons I really like the Tales of the Tor project is it's a big project, lots of people are using it, it's easy to use, you don't have to be a geek or a super smart person to know how to, you know, and you just boot this, it's, it's like a masterclass in information security, you go boot this CD. This USB stick, and that's what it needs to do. And it's okay. lots of problems. Okay, that's good. Go on, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, let's open it up a bit as well. If there's anyone, um, that, that's, that's, um, is it on the it's on security? Specific? Yeah, can I park that for a little bit and we'll come back to it because I'm aware that there's so many different types of uh, things that are relevant. It's a really for... short one. Okay, go on. Um, putting your um, server in Iceland is a really good idea for security if you're running a site because it's got some of the best media transparency and safety laws in the world. Um, uh, Brigitte, John Stotter, sorry if I'm pronouncing the name quite right, co-produced WikiLeaks um, Collateral Murder with uh, Julian Assange. She came up with a lot of the laws through IMMI. Ask me, I won't go any more because it's boring people probably, but Iceland, put your server there, they, they will keep it up no matter what. It's the, one of the safest places to put servers. That is valuable. From your site. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does anyone here teach media skills in terms of um, writing, teaching, um, video, or anything else related in, in institutions like universities or schools? Anyone else? Just get a bit of that. All right. Ruby, is it okay to ask you a little bit how you think some of these more um, uh, radical or kind of non-big um, media things could be incorporated into the uh, curriculum? Do you incorporate it at the elements there? Well, um, I'm planning to incorporate it, yeah, and what I'm teaching in Germany. So I'm trying to get some of these skills to the students, but sometimes a part of these students came with some skills, you know, like, okay, they already know about it because they already are interested in this kind of things. But uh, yeah, we're in. I've tried to, I'm, I'm learning too, so it's like, uh, 
know, like um, makes are a, a sharing point, the classes are a sharing point, but also I'm trying to uh, you know, protect myself around it and trying to incorporate. Sometimes it's difficult, it depends where I'm taking from Spain, where my accent, my, my Spanish, sorry about it. Uh, so, um, yes, uh, there, you know, we, we have a, a really professional, uh, where the focus of the, of the journalist studies are really focused on practice, not theoretical. And so, sometimes it's like, okay, people, it's uh, students and also the teachers, sometimes we are really focused on technology, and I think that it's interesting, but we also need a critical view of this. Uh, uses, for example, now we, you know, students are really uh, enthusiastic with Twitter, but we don't have Facebook to communicate and to spread information on what we, we see that are social movement and respectful female movement that they use it a lot. And it's true, it's really, really, you know, they have a, this social media have a, a big diffusion, diffusion, but we don't have to forget that it's a commercial social media. So yeah, we try to try to introduce these topics, but uh, not always is easy because you know I, I, I'm not the only who decide about the module about the subject. Yeah. Um, what ages do you teach? Um, between 18 and 22. Of course, you've got a bit more flexibility than yeah. Yeah, 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 and also right, in masters, you have uh, in MA, you have more freedom yeah. to introduce it. Yeah, yeah. and, and they, sometimes it's it's interesting because I, they are really shocked, like, oh, we we don't know nothing about this, or we know that. You, you can find you know, the these two different profiles, one more tech and another like. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No, it's good. Um, I feel sometimes I feel awkward when I'm like facilitating because I try and draw out people's um, un answers, and then they, um, um, then they talk to me, and I've, I've, I've got to, like, I feel like I keep nodding a lot, and then yeah. people say, "Stop nodding so much, right?" Well. So when if I ask on you to draw something out, just have a chat to everyone as well. Don't just look at me because I'm not that important. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. It's all right. I, I was going to mention that at the beginning because I just. I, I kind of like the way to look and everything, and I'm thinking about it. <laughs> could could, um, could I draw on a few other people so we get as uh, as many people speaking as possible? Could you share a bit about the MA and how it relates to any of the subject matter? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm doing an MA in, at the University of Lincoln. Um, it's quite a way away from here. But my MA is Journalism, War and International Human Rights. Um, before I did the MA, I didn't know that much about journalism. I wanted to get into journalism, but... The MA is really, you know, it's much more critical than, than a degree, and, and I just see things a bit different. Like in the last lecture we had in here, and it was here, on the Chomsky propaganda model, and basically that's my whole degree. <laughs> so that, that we've been studying it, and it is, yeah, I don't really know what to say, but it's been great. So we've got that um, Chomsky uh, basis that's in, integrated into your MA, and uh, Milan, would you share anything about? Any work that you've done to try and um, do, you, I don't know if you do stuff in institutions or if you kind of are on, are able to try and guide them or support them in, in, in the resources they use? Um, I've had very limited contact with institutions about media stuff. I have been to Lincoln a couple of times to the journalism school there. Um, I'm not sure I have anything to say about it. Are you, are you happy kind of? Um, being outside of that and just being able to have a strong presence with, with, um, but not um, such a kind of because I'm, I'm basically going back to Alan's point, which is we need to do more. And I'm wondering if is that the right? I want to open that up to everyone. Is what's the right tactic to do that? Is it to get it into institutions and schools, or is it just to do the alternative better? I have an opinion about that. Um, so I started, because um, my, my uh, objective was to fulfill a vocation in producing like, alternative radical news content. So um, I started off by doing documentary independently um, and kind of a little bit freelancing as well. And I really wanted to get a degree, so I went to the International Film School in Wales and did that documentary film and television degree. 
um, I thought that would be really great because it's like formalizing my skills, getting like, accreditation, recognition. Uh, and then I realized that this was a very bad choice. Um, especially if you're ideologically radical, which is what the kind of this workshop is. Obviously, we're working inside the system trying to learn the skills. <coughs> in my opinion, a, a real waste of time and money. Um, basically, learning the skills uh, in, in a grassroots way outside of the system is not only a savior of time, but also money and also uh, institutional time. I mean, obviously, if you're working outside the system, you can learn at your own speed, you can uh, focus just on things that you're personally interested in, and you can have a much more organic and independent um, career and skills curve. So, um, in my experience, I would recommend people that they teach themselves, or they find people that can teach them, um, and build for them a network of people who are professional, semi-professional, or aspiring professional, learn the skills that way. Um, that's what I did, and it definitely worked for me. So that's my ideology. I know that might be a bit too radical. <laughs> I'm happy for people to now just pitch in whenever they want. Could you tell us, I could either an internet email thing to get to, to find out more about what to do? Um, yeah, so um, my email address. You know. The website? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, mail, M A I L, at Harry. Like Harry Potter, my surname is Fear, like no fear. Right. Dot co. Yeah, it's mail, M-A-I-L, at harryfear.co.uk. Yeah, that's the second what Harry says, and it sort of relates to Harry as, to a certain extent as well. Um, at Occupy London, um, I was part of founding a group called Occupy News Network, and we actually interviewed Harry because Harry was embedded in Gaza, and it was Pedro, the editor. And um, it was the the um, genocide before last. Um, and at that point, Occupy News Network was just massive in terms of the main, the, the, the narrative was just not getting out there and it just ex <coughs> exploded. But um, going back to the point, sorry, um, the, that experience, we were just activists that we just knew that the, the news was not going out there and it was just um, activists that just got into writing and, and learned the skills, learned how to make a WordPress process, uh, uh, use WordPress to develop a site. One person really concentrated on that and then just got stories out there. And it, it meant that you could write exactly what you wanted to. It meant that you're not constrained. Um, and through it, there is ways to get paid for doing alternative journalism. You can continue that. Um, yeah, you can continue, like, a lot of this, the, this is about the corporate media and the fact that you can't get certain stories and that they just won't let, let you tell certain stories. And I, but I think it's, yeah, I really recommend it. Kind of interesting, interesting, sorry, uh, interesting there. Because what, what platform, I'm kind of interested what platform people are using to publish their, uh, publish their news and publish their content. Because I just want to um, uh, mention a little story about, um, quite, I'm, I'm also quite interested in something called the Federated Social Nets, Federated Social Networking, okay, which is not centralised, so it allows people to publish their own content to tell post content. So I'm really interested in, in, in learning what other platforms people are using, so you mentioned WordPress. Um, and I just want to share a little story about uh, a bit of software called, um, it's called, it's called GNU Social, okay, GNU Social. GNU Social, uh, and if you go back to a search engine, you'll find out some information about it. Okay, it's software. It looks a little bit like Twitter, but it's not Twitter. Okay, and it allows you to self-post things that you can you can share information with with other people. Um, but the little story I wanted to share was there was a, uh, a famous uh, I don't know who they are a, a famous Spanish celebrity was banned on Twitter recently. Okay, and within. And, within, uh, and they, they moved from, they're called Barbie Jacuta. I don't know if it's Spanish, maybe you know who they are. I don't know. <laughs> um, and they have a, they have a, um, a, 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 a column in an you know, online newspaper. Anyhow, Barbie Jacuta, she got banned from Twitter for a short period of time and moved to um, a, a, a new social website uh, called Quitters, Quitter.se. Okay? Um, and suddenly, the, 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 the numbers of people using Twitter.it jumped from being like 100, maybe 50 active users to like 2,000, you know, and this like servers were crumbling under the load because like, oh my god, what are we going to do here? Okay, um, 
And then they set up, a, a, because the, the software is a decentralized software, we were able to set up a one, a, a Spanish-speaking one in called Twitter.es, okay? And there's an Icelandic one, Twitter.is, okay? And, uh, anyway, um, so I'm kind of interested in what platforms people are using to, for their, um, to, to take control of their own media, their own publishing, and also how they federate, how they share that information with other people, okay? If you're, if you're, if you're not on Facebook, yet. Yeah. Before we do that, I just want to welcome people who just joined us. Um, it's a workshop on training, and training that relates to the kind of um, subject matters that are here, so kind of alternative media or radical journalism within big media. So I just want you to just keep on the subject of training. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, and also, I just want to invite you to please step forward, so that if you're not sure about contributing, Please take it on yourself to step forward so we get the biggest diversity of voices heard. And also uh, to invite you to step back a little bit as well, if you've contributed um, a reasonable amount as well. Ideally, I shouldn't be saying anything at all, but it's just to, just to I'll guide you in, in those kinds of ways. Do you want to uh, quickly respond to that and then we'll kind of go over to you? Yeah, I mean, in terms of making platforms, WordPress is the most of the ones. I'm involved as an activist and a writer of lots of things, and WordPress just, and it's, uh, it is very self explanatory. I managed to make one myself. I'm not an expert at all on it. But they, if you, you type it into Google, what you want to do, widgets, and all this sort of stuff, and yeah, it's really it's just a step by step. You can improve it. And I suppose my first tip just keep it quite clean and simple to start off with when you're learning it. Like that. I just want to feed something in about training itself. Um, I was trained as a journalist, but I actually wasn't trained at all. I just learned on the job. And I think a lot of the problems that perhaps we, we face is that because we're so distributed, we're so fragmented, there's none of that old kind of, you know, passing on the trade business that goes on. And yet, there must be lots of people like me that was always, when worked in journalism, mainstream journalism for 15 years, and I worked in alternative journalism. And, and a lot of the things I've been doing, for example, in this paper that I've been running, is, is you know, that people talk about giving the voice to people, which is fantastic. And I mean, I've got like 150 contributors, but most of the, those people who have the voice don't have the skills of journalists. They've got the story, but they don't really have to tell it. And I, I would like to kind of open up a place where, you know, people like me, or, or um, you know, I'm, I'm mostly a features journalist or features editor, um, can pull their skills and train people to actually tell a story. Because, you know, as you all know, it's, it, it's, it's in the telling that people get. I mean, some people are natural writers, but a lot of people need to know the craft. And there's some basic things about news journalism. The objectivity is one of them. Not, it, you, you know, a lot of people tell their stories for themselves, it's very emotional, but they haven't got facts in there. Um, they could get them if they knew how to do it. But it's very simple to do, but you need the time and you need the people, and you need to have that one-to-one -one relationship to teach people how to do that. So is there a, I don't know, maybe there already exists a kind of group of people who do that kind of stuff, but I'd be happy to contribute. Let's stay with that for a little bit and spend at least five minutes on that, because that's fantastic, if you're okay. So the subject is really uh, what communication mechanisms are there between trainers, but also these training around storytelling and is it okay to get things started just to ask you a little bit more some of the, the key skills that you think you can... Sure, yeah. sure. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I'm not a news journalist. I mean, I've always been a features journalist, but I, you know, I've edited a newspaper. And, um, and I, I mean, I just think that, you know, the, base, the basic things of getting, getting the story... Okay. Is it all right to just have a seat here, just a little bit closer to the microphone for the recording? <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, the, the basic where, when, how, you know, that all news journalists are trained to do, you know, put, put, put all your things in the first paragraph, you know, take yourself out, unless it's really important that you're in there, if you're in the field. Um, I mean, those kind, of, those kind of things, you can look at a story and you kind of go, well, that needs to change and that really needs moving around, that needs to be more punchy, we, we need proper quotes from here, we don't want your opinion, you want it to come from other people's, uh, you know, voices, all these kind of really basic stuff, which, you know, people love to learn. But who's going to teach them? Who's going to be, you know, I learned because I was sitting at a typewriter, those were the days, <laughs> and the next door person was, uh, you know, 20, she's been a journalist for 20 years. She says, hey, your copy looks crap. Give it to me. I'll rewrite it. Or you lay it out like this. All those kind of really simple things, right? But it makes such a difference. If you, I mean, if, you know, if you, want, if you want to get the story across, you need to be able to put, 
put it, put it down properly. And, um, <coughs> you know, and basic interviewing techniques. That's another thing that I think would be really good to teach people. How to ask a question, how to listen, how to do a proper interview. Not just transcribe the tape, but actually build a story the old-fashioned editorial way. Can I just ask, how do you, because there's a lot of talk today about writing. I'm a photographer, it's a chance to get next to me as a I've been doing it for five years, um, and I really struggle to get my work out there. I was totally self-funded. I travelled from North Devon to London, to here, to everywhere. And um, my only way of getting my work out at the moment is through Facebook, which I absolutely detest, but it's the only way I can get my work out there. I also put on Demotics, who I think I sold two pictures to last year for £18. They don't want my work. Um, the public are very happy to see my work. It's going up and up and up on page. But yeah, how do, you yeah, know, no alternative media is also taking this up because all I get is we don't have a budget for photography. But so that kind of squashes people like me out of the picture because I don't, you know, I have to earn a living, even if it's just paying petrol, to the gig to cover the protest. So it's all talking today about what's writing, but there's all writing is generally backed up by imagery and film. And that kind of thing. So just curious as to how. I just want to take that and kind of bring it back into the world of training. Mm -hmm. In in that uh, a lot of people use training as a way of supporting their um, other work as well. Mm -hmm. I know that I can't get money to do radical journalism, but I can get bit money to train other people <coughs> how to do it. So I'm just sort of using that as a way of bringing your subject matter back into the um, world of training. Um. Yeah, no, it's uh, uh, really very interesting because I work um, uh, for a local social enterprise called Union Street Media Arts, and um, we, we, we do a lot of training, we, we work with a lot of um, very isolated groups, we work with a lot of uh, young people, um, women, and um, we, we provide a lot of training, and we, we, do, we have two sort of um, uh, mechanisms of resourcing that, so one is an income generating arm of our company where we charge for training, but the other mechanism that we use is applying for funding or finding partners or organisations who have resources and who have funding that, that, that want to develop interesting projects that have a training or skill sharing or work experience or work placement sort of arm. And we've done quite a lot of projects in particular with young people where um, we run training projects, we share skills. We um, teach young people how to story tell, how to um, you know write um, and and, um, and uh, make films, and then we support them to create their content and in whatever way they want to. We support them to explore their ideas, explore their issues, and express them in ways that they feel comfortable doing. Um, and the key to, to doing that sort of work and finding those opportunities to utilize your skills as a, as a photojournalist or as a filmmaker is by looking for local organizations, like-minded organizations, because you know we're crying out for people like yourselves to step forward and to offer your skills. You know, if it's for free, that's amazing. But you know that there is funding, there is resourcing there. There are lots of organizations. We we recently applied to the Association for Gates Manchester Authorities and we've got a three year funded project which is which is about training young people how uh, how to make a film. Um, about issues that are important to them and getting those films out there and setting up young film clubs and things like that. You know, the resources are out there and there are organisations who have the resources to go forward and apply for those, fund, for those pots of funding, but it's about, you know, identifying those, you know, getting involved, making the links in the community, voluntary sector, charity, social enterprises, uninformed associations, that there are, there are thousands out there in, in, in the UK you know, that would love people like you to step forward and, and support them in, in, you know, in some way. And, and that's where a lot of this kind of shift in energy um, is, is taking place. That's where a lot of the awareness is, is taking place too. Uh, I, th I think it's great. If anyone wants to chip in with tips or um, tricks. Yeah, I think what you're saying is great. I'd like to know the name of your organisation again. I forgot it. Um, well, I've been working as a freelance um, photo journalist and filmmaker for about nine years. I've made loads and loads of films, and I think the best training is to go out there and do it. The best training is to have an idea and then 
develop that idea into something that would make money from because you've got to pay the rent for the living in this rather than the distance. But also, um, I share skills. I've got a PGCE and a Masters in International Court Journalism. So I can share skills, but these, all the funding for that kind of work was in the last government. This government's squashed it all. Um, so much so that it's, it might be funded from um, small organisations, but the real best way to do it is to do it, to share it, to get noticed. If you're doing a film, develop that film. If you're doing photography, um, do a book with people. Because I've sent loads of frontline photographs out to news agencies to try and get work from it. Um, but the best kind of training that I would suggest is like, have a, an idea and run with it, you know, and then look for the periphery stuff, the training that, that people are giving out today. But I think the most radical training is to put yourself on the front line, to put yourself into a situation, and to see a story and to develop that story. Just as a direct response to that, I'm, uh, I haven't been a professional journalist ever, but I've been a member of the NUJ for like the last eight years or something, simply because I host material and run blogs that are potentially a legal issue, and I want NUJ to kind of have my back. If and, and just if you join the NUJ, get in touch with your local chapter and say, will you support me if the shit hits the fan? And they go, yeah, we'll, we'll do our best. That's the best insurance you can get against crippling legal cases. Can we just check how many NUJ members there are in the room? It's surprising because I think that my experience of speaking to the NUJ is that they are very keen to get more new members in. I know that there's a bit of an internal conflict because a lot of the older, um, more traditional media feel like they're basically, like some, I think there was a big spat in NUJ at some point recently because the NUJ wanted to put on a, a, like a one-day um, photo, quote, a sort of photo journalism course and teach people how to do these things to do video and photography and I know that that really upset a lot of the more traditional media members who, you know, they've made a living out of great photography that they can't get anyone to buy anymore. So there's, there's a bit of conflict 
what's the duration of this conflict within the AUG? I think the force they are dealing with the transition from old to new as well. But I get the impression that they are they are wanting more new media people to come in, and there's an opportunity there for people who are working in media to help shape future direction in the AUG as well. And that kind of that a, a real impact on the training stuff that we need. So maybe an idea for anyone that has a look at it. What's the name of your organization? Common Space. Common Space. Common Space. Common space, yeah. Common space. Okay. How does, oh, we talked uh, at the opening of this um, event, we talked about how the media is biased and how it propagates it. So how does uh, journalists or filmmakers who are making documentaries, how do they get their voices across the film across without it being distorted, without it being facts up? Because if we're, and this core, and this uh, cinema is about how the media is biased, how are we to get our, or what will happen with the training and uh, if the interview goes terribly wrong and if you're being grilled like left, right and centre. So how do you try to get your message across for social change when the media, as you were saying, is a biased propaganda organisation? You mean when you're on the receiving end of it? Yeah, when you're on the receiving end, when you have film to promote and something like this, and you're being interviewed by the journalist, mm -hmm. and you know the journalists are right wing and they're not going to be impartial, and you're the interviewer, and they're actually grilling you like if you're an MNMP, and they say one question is coming after another. There are really good media training courses which are free. One of them is run by an organization called MEND, as in to break your leg, MEND, right. um, which is uh, an organization set up to train um, Muslims. In um, and to raise community issues around the Muslim community. And they regularly run, uh, run media training workshops, which are very good, all over the UK. In fact, there's one today somewhere. Um, there was one recently in the North of England, um, somewhere like last week, I think. Um, and another organisation, which is again Muslim specific, but from there, obviously, you can build context, it's free, um, is the uh, NPAC, the Muslim Public Affairs Committee in the UK. These are political organizations to an extent, but they still offer free media training courses, which are, the skills are still there, and you can you know, take them forward. Um, so they're, they're free. Yeah, and because we're running short time, I'd be happy for if people were able to quickly share interesting projects and resources, because I know Alan's uh, taking notes that we're going to put on the blog later. So let's do maybe do five minutes of quick shares of useful things. Yeah, um, I, I just want to say in relation to what you're saying about opportunities to, to share skills and so on, mm -hmm. that um, one thing that happens in the States, which is which I find very inspiring, is the Z Media Institute, <coughs> um, where there is a thing which Z Communication, the website ZNet, Z Magazine, they're one organization. Um, they, they bring together a whole bunch of people and train people who want to become um, more skilled, radical journalists, and they, uh, they, you know, people do pay to go on it, and then they pay people to do the training. So I'm not exactly sure how they, how they do the um, fee side of things, but that's something that they ran for a very long time. I don't know whether they're still doing it right now, but it's possible. I mean, it's, yeah, it's completely possible for us to do something like a radical journalism school here. I don't see why not. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm not a journalist, so I can't really hate this because it's sort of distorting the truth, but I think one thing that would be really useful is um, for journalists to be trained for activists and how to create these stories, because like, I go to quite a few campaign groups in Manchester, and some of the people there are brilliant, and the ideas are brilliant, the principles are brilliant, but it's about you know, they'll be standing with like, rubbish placards outside the shop and mm -hmm. not getting at the right time or not saying, not having, you know, big, beautiful, eye catching banners that, that make the news. So I think more training like that would be really um, Feel free to just keep pitching in, yeah. It's sort of a call out for activists, activists as well. Go down and, for, and sort of reinforce the same system. Mm -hmm. involved with quite a lot of London activist groups and the amount of time that people like, spend trying to get the corporate media and then try and dilute the story to get into them. Mm. Why not build, instead of having a, um, a media list, why not have you know, Corporate Watch, um, Common Space, Bella Catalonia, uh, Red Pepper, all these publications that would like to write your story. Why try not to get your proper story in there in some sort of like, in the Guardians of, say, 
do it, but not cover the whole issues and skimp around it and then um, dress it up in a sort of corporate way. So, you know, so like just having a media list, an alternative media list, and trying to encourage activists to to um, speed up the transition. I think it's a problem because a lot of kind of activist activities, they do get reported. Oh, it was just an idea, it wasn't yeah, just a response yeah. back to so it. Um, yes, but I think the problem is it's not covered, covered up in the sort of mainstream press. So it's about, I think it's about telling people, right, if you've only got a few that protest it, you need to be creative and you need to do some eye-catching, giving them tips about what to do. Cool, any more quick shares of um, useful resources or projects that... Uh, uh, it's, it's in Spain, but uh, it's related also to the Indignados movement, like Occupy, I suppose, it's similar. That, uh, you know, in the communication team, a lot of people participate. Some of them were journalists, some of them weren't. Um, but, uh, you know, they learn, I think, that they improve, they, 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 they work better than journalists. They start to, uh, to experiment with media, with streaming media, with another, or even with, yeah, to, to use Twitter or Facebook as a, uh, activist media, uh, so they just start after the Fifteen Man Movement, the Indigenous Movement. They just start to to sh to share the what they learn, and they made now they made a radical community manager that is okay. How to use the social media, the commercial social media, and also the another alternative social media to change or to spread the information in a viral, you know, like a have a lot of virality and uh, to, to change social problems more, to make campaigns to, against a bank or, a, or the government or some specific points. And they also create wikis where they share, you know, um, where all this, all this uh, information like, okay, how, how to create, uh, how to streaming a demonstration or a, whatever, no? How to stream with different, like, fifth people streaming this demonstration, or um, how to use a, a blog, how to create a blog, or how to, you know, it's like, okay, uh, all this information is in wikis, I don't know if it, by the moment it's possible, it's, it's the same, like, it's okay, we create some alternative media, but at the same time, okay, now we are going to share what we learn, and it's open, so. Okay, can I draw on the Web Architects um, guys, because um, I wanted to share about them, because they are a uh, company from Sheffield who host a lot of radical media or, and kind of community sites, so if you want to know about hosting things that maybe you're worried that they might get pulled, those guys are good people to talk to, um, but also, just to recap a little bit, oh, um, Network23 is a place that you can go, network23.org. Um, for um, it's not entirely anonymous blogs, in that um, in order to send you password resets, we send a copy to of your password reset to your email. So your email is on the system. So that's not entire um, anonymity, but it's somewhere you can go apply for a free blog, give your email, and then it's a level of protection against lawyers' letters, which often arrive for content that isn't necessarily illegal but is unfavourable to a company, they send a lawyer's letter, nine times out of ten, the company um, hosting company will pull the website. With Network 23, they'll look at it a bit more carefully, <coughs> maybe get back to lawyers saying, we don't really understand this letter, can you send another one? <coughs> and nine times out of ten, they don't. So network, that's one that I want to share about that. Um, getting on for seven minutes left, and I want to spend the last five minutes talking about how we take this conversation further following up on your point of how do we share information between trainers who are prepared to give their time, how do we share information about getting paid to do this kind of training so that it can support kind of um, the more progressive edge of what, of what we do. Uh, so in the last minute before we do that, anyone want to quickly share anything else? I'm in the process of setting up a magazine which is going to kind of blend academic and investigative journalism with PBO, but it's like, say, young start not having trained as a journalist, but yeah, in terms of that, like, how do I go about or how would someone go about accessing these resources and, like, any advice and things for someone starting out in that way? I think, you know, it would be really interesting to, like, 
know what would be the best step to kind of make this impact on the Okay, well let's use that question as the last five minutes framework because that's kind of the, the same thing, isn't it? How are we going to take this forward? What's the point of contact? We're going to put the notes for this session up on the realmedia.press website as a blog post. Obviously you can make comments on that um, post, um, hopefully. And uh, the Twitter hashtag realmedia is a good place to, to share stuff. But beyond that, how can we take the kind of useful things that are happening in this room forward and I don't, I, you know, if uh, the bottom line could be we send a piece of paper around, we kind of set up an email list and then we kind of all join it and then we kind of, it kind of peters out, that's the kind of default one, we can do that, that's still better than nothing, but maybe people have got other ideas and kind of maybe that something already exists. Um, spinning off what you just said, as you were speaking, it just seemed to me like... <coughs> It would be good if there was a wiki that the people who have come to this conference could add to sharing resources. Yeah, just something like that. So, because obviously yeah. there's only too many people here to talk to yeah. everyone individually, but it's such a good opportunity to have everyone in the one room that having some kind of one thing probably where people can put their there's contacts. Probably, there's probably everything. someone at this conference who can set it up before the end and it could be announced at Yeah, any of us here uh, at the back there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Could we do it under the realmedia.press domain name, wiki.realmedia.press? Is that something yeah. you'd be prepared to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got access to GS. I'll just, I can go sort that out now, because okay. I think you're right, it's good to do it while we're here. Okay. Alright, you guys get cracking with other ideas and I'll try and sort that out. Thank you very much. Okay, well let's think of any up upcoming events. There's something that um, me and, and a few other people go to called Barn Camp. If you Google Barn Camp, it's like Bar Camp but in a barn in, in like on the borders of Wales. It's kind of information security and alternative media. That's a really good fun thing. It's a weekend, it's camping and like, it's like good food. It's cider. Um, <laughs> any, any other events coming up? Probably there'll be another real media event. It seems pretty successful, so the conversation will continue there. Well, do you know about the three stages of it? Go on. So this is the first part, the gathering. So then there's the parody, which is um, uh, the mail online that's being created with a wall of uh, love instead of a wall of hate or a wall of shame. And then there's the Daily Mail week, and there's also the Occupy the Sun week, which is physical actions happening against mm -hmm. the... Um, those two newspapers or newspaper chains and then that follows on into the aggregator site which is what this is all leading into um, the aggregator site is all the there's 150 I think uh, names on the list of how many UK organisations were invited to this um, the aggregator site will use their RS feed to have a rolling um, news it's, a one, it's like a one stop free shop if you like 
And then once you click onto it, you'll be diverted off so all the different sites won't lo lose traffic. The idea of that aggregator is that, say, somebody's heard of this site, but they haven't heard of that site, they get all their news from there. So then they can start looking at this whole thing and go, oh, this is really interesting. And they, they're starting to get like a full, like the way I described it to somebody the other day, it was like a Guardian's worth, a Sunday Guardian's worth of news. But it's all coming from a non corporate perspective, it's all coming from uh, different angles. So, what, what, what domain do you guys have for that? So, it's real media. Okay. Um, another sh a quick shout out today if you've got stories that you think this should be what the media is telling, <coughs> hashtag us. We'll get on Twitter and we'll bounce it back out. So, what story should the real media be telling? So, just tell us, explain within a tweet why you want this article out there because there'll be a lot of focus on it today. And I think that's it. Yeah. Great. We're out of time. Are we, are we missing something? Are we, we're kind of like the, there is an event tomorrow on Sunday where kind of the idea is like what came out of the workshops, how do we move it forward? Obviously, we'll feed in this side of it. Is, are we missing something that we can do really quickly? We've got the idea of a wiki where we share resources. Just to your like, Facebook page, and people can then submit news about the events Okay, so I think that that is a good proposal, the idea of a Facebook page for um, kind of, I, I don't necessarily like the term radical media training, but we know what we're talking about when we say that, right? So kind of like alternative radical, you know, kind of. And I, the thing that's really come out for me is when you're learning through doing it, that's what loads of people have said, is that that's very doing it. So, there's real possibility with these outlets that we can do that a lot. Is so, is anyone prepared to volunteer to take that and set it up and that to be a part of the? Because I don't really do Facebook. Does anyone and we can put that on a blog post? Okay. Just quick. Hey, would you be up for doing that? I'll work with you and we'll talk to the organisers, mate. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thanks.